there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are doing a line and wash of this sweet little scene that I took a photo of on Monhegan last week. It was this little gallery that had this window with a paint palette in it that said um, artist supplies. And this little gallery not only sold work from artists that painted on the island, it also sold a few art supplies. So if you got out there and realized you wanted to paint or you ran out of something, you could go get some basic supplies in there. So really cute. The owner of the shop was really nice and I thought this would be really fun to paint. Um, I'm using a brown fine liner here and this is from a pack of 20 fine liners that I got a couple weeks ago and it is um, it's got the full you know your basic nuts and bolts black fine liners everything from a teeny tiny little nib up to a brush and then it's got a 0.3 or 0.03 it's kind of that, that most standard use size of uh, all your other colors basically so it's probably like 10 black fine liners and 10 colored fine liners and this is the brown one. So I decided that I, I always love the look of a brown line and I don't really have many waterproof brown pens. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to use that. Um, I'm starting, I started off with a window and just kind of put little dots to divide up the space. And then I drew in the panes and I didn't use a ruler or anything because I wanted this to have a real sketchy feeling, kind of like it would if I was sketching it out in the world, basically out in the wild. And um, yeah, I'm working out from the center. That's the focal point. And I did correct the perspective uh, skew there. I was uh, taking a photo of that a little bit higher than I said. You can actually see my reflection in the mirror in the window there. Um, but so I, I just kind of straightened that out and cropped in a little bit more and added some more flowers. And you know what? When you're doing a painting, it's your painting. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm painting this on a watercolor greeting card. And the reason for this is a couple reasons, actually. Um, this would be really cute to have in my sketchbook, but my sketchbook has cotton paper in it, the one that I was using for my other Monhegan sketches. And um, this paint that I'm gonna use did not work well on cotton paper. It looked really drab and yucky. And it looked better on some really cheap postcards that I had. And so I figured I'll, I'll probably end up painting this again with paints I prefer. So I didn't really want this one in my sketchbook, but I also figured if I painted it on a um, postcard, I can send it or on a greeting card, I can send it to an art artist friend. So um, I thought that would be really cool. Cool. especially if it was like an artist friend having a birthday and you could put like a gift card to an art supply store how fun would that be uh, so that's what I was thinking there and uh, plus there's no pressure when you're using a greeting card I buy them by the 100 packs the Strathmore greeting cards I also use the Canson Montval greeting cards they're both very comparable I recommend both of them but sometimes you'll find that if you're using cheaper paint or you're using like student grade paint it performs better on a cellulose wood pulp paper than it would perform on cotton paper. In fact, I gutted this palette, but um, I think that if you use this in like a um, adult coloring book or on cardstock or on rice paper, well, maybe not rice paper, but on something that really wasn't heavily sized, it probably would perform better than a um, professional paint. But as far as using it on watercolor paper to do watercolor techniques, it just wasn't wasn't it for me. But I wanted to give it a good fair shot. So I thought this paper might perform a little bit better than what I'd used so far. I, I tried it in a couple different sketchbooks, uh, Travelog by Handbook and my Handmade Cotton sketchbook. And it just, yeah, it just wasn't, it, it was not uh, sparking joy. And you know what we do when things don't spark joy? We, we thank them for their service and we move on. And I do have plenty of paints to put in there. And you're probably thinking, Lindsay, why are you getting out of the watercolor palette? Have you lost your mind? Possibly, possibly I have, but, um, I do, you know, we all have collections, right? Do you collect anything? If you collect something, let me know what you collect in the comments below. I collect two things. I collect travel watercolor palettes. I know it's a bizarre collection, but I enjoy using them and I enjoy having them. So it's per a perfect collection, better than something that you collect and just sit on the shelf, in my opinion. And I collect rubber stamps, especially vintage woodblock rubber stamps. So those are my two collections and they're collections that I thoroughly enjoy. So please don't yuck my yum. All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, I didn't buy it for the paint. I bought it. I didn't even know if it came with paint or not. I was just enamored with that little palette and it comes in a little leatherette, um, like a faux leather pouch. And it's very well made. The stitching is perfect. The quality feels really good. The plastic is thick and not brittle and hinges work really well. And it's very lightweight. I clipped it onto my belt loop yesterday and went about my business. And um, I think it's gonna be a really great hiking option because I love hiking. 
hiking and um, I love to hike and paint and sometimes when I'm out hiking I'm hiking with like my husband who's not a painter or I'm hiking with friends that aren't painters and um, I'm kind of a fast walker and I can be kind of a fast hiker so if I climb to the top of the waterfall before my friends then I can sit down and do a five minute sketch and this would allow me to add color to it and not you know take a ton of time and uh I did make a few other improvements to the thing I added. I took out the swatch and added a little mixing area up there. And I'm really happy with the palette, actually. But if you, I, I definitely would say don't buy it for the paint, buy it for the palette. If you have $25 to spend and you need to have good paint, that's not it. Uh, but for the palette, I'm really pleased with it. You can see, sorry, I'm talking so fast. I don't know why. Uh, you can see the drying shift there in the greenery um from what to dry where i use the heat gun because i've time lapsed this so i mean that's kind of kind of shows you what kind of paint we got there it's kind of like the jerry q arts paint i reviewed many years ago i changed the color of my window to a bright yellow versus the uh kind of baby blue or bluish color that it was in real life because i thought it would be a little more cheerful and also the mixing with these colors is not great um I, you can mix some nice greens i found trying to mix that blue it just got you could get real close to the color but it was just a very dead looking color and I didn't like that very much so I went with yellow I like yellow it's a happy color and this is going to be a greeting card so I want it to be a happy greeting card and to lift somebody's day so um you know colors convey emotions colors convey meanings and if you can get a nice happy meaning in there then all the better now here I'm glazing over the dry foliage with some other brush strokes and um I mean, I think it looks fine. It, you can definitely do some painting with it. They're mixing up a brown to put on the ground here. I mixed a gray for the background for those shingles and, it, and the window panes, and it didn't occur to me there's actually a gray in the palette that uh, that I could have just used, but we'll use that here and there in, in a few minutes. But it, it didn't occur to me at the beginning. Um, you can kind of see how bright those colors are. It kind of gives you a little bit of... Um, of a hint that they may be opaque or they may have optical brighteners or they may have uh, some precipitated chalk in there to kind of stretch the pigments. I'm surprised that they weren't more opaque, honestly, because with how chalky they kind of felt, I thought for sure they'd be covering up my lines. But honestly, they weren't that bad. I mean, for a line and wash, especially if you were to use a black pen and not just a, a brown pen like I used here, um, they'd probably do just fine. I'm kind of picky with watercolors, uh, watercolors that I want to use. I don't want to put something in there because if the paints aren't good, I'm never going to grab that palette to go because I might create something I really love. Um, and yeah, don't, um, don't force a fit is something I learned recently. It's like, don't force something to fit if it's not a good fit. And, uh, and I do that all the time and I'm going to stop that. <laughs> I'm going to try to anyway. Um, so, but I did want to give this a real fair shot. I didn't want to poo poo on the paints until I'd given it a few little paintings to see how I liked it. But, um, I think this came out all right, despite the paint. And hopefully that helped you if you were considering buying this palette or maybe gave you an idea on what you might want to paint with it or paint with the paints you already have, which will be better than these. But uh, anyway, fun little project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.